Joycey, can I ask some life advice from you? Go for it. What would you say if I got this tattoo? Oh my god, I would love it, to be honest. Do you reckon an Eagles fan has got this tattoo, or do you reckon that's someone who hates the Eagles? I reckon it's a Bogan Eagles fan. Jeez, that's a yeah. horrible thing to post, considering like, that guy's had a lot of strife. Yeah, it it's, it's a pretty bad taste kind of yeah. tattoo. At least make a Daniel Chick. Alright, Joycey, back on True Footy after a, a little break. What yeah. did you think of AFLX yesterday? Um, I thought it was okay, nothing more. It wasn't the most entertaining, but it was... Just good to see some footy. The best thing was probably seeing all those like great players um, play together. Do yeah. so you think the format was better than last year? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I thought it was good. But the only thing I would change is just the Dorky team name because yeah, Lee Matthew came up with a great idea. He said it should be State of Origin. So if the four teams were South Australia, West Australia, Victoria, yeah. and Allies. Yeah, I don't mind that. It, it, some of the stuff felt a little bit gimmicky. Like, I don't really like the idea of one game changer player that can kick double points. I mean, I'd get rid of the whole Marvel thing behind it, but they're paying for it, I guess. So yeah. they have a right to have it's control like the, a bit. The Zuba Duba goals last Yeah, year. exactly. Did they call them Zuba goals this year? I don't no, know. I, don't I don't think they, they did. Yeah. Zuba Duba is an icy pole. <laughs> Zuba Duba is an icy pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know that. Yeah. But like, um... <laughs> I think the uh, game changer thing is the idea that it doesn't matter how far you are down that you can still win with like yeah. a minute to go. I think that's what they want to achieve. Because yeah. the, there's going to be kids that are trying to get involved. So kids obviously don't like losing, so they want to feel like they can win at any stage of the game. Yeah, no, that's true. And it kind of keeps it entertaining if one team's flogging the other. Like the bottom team's always in it. Yeah, I felt a bit sorry probably for the um, indigenous team because I think they were just so much smaller than every other team that they, <laughs> you could see every time like, some mm. people were going up for a contested mark, they'd barely fly. They did have Ellis Yolman, he's a big boy. Yeah, I mean, he was like their only, yeah. only real big um, player. Yeah. I tell you who really impressed me, actually, it was Ali Ali. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he surprised me. Mm. I thought he was like, he looked really athletic and moved around the ground yeah. pretty well. I was pretty impressed. Uh, yeah. Jack Rewalt as well. Mm. He's looking good, I reckon. Um, I think he's primed for a big season. What do you think of Pat Cripps playing out of the goal square, virtually? Yeah. Could, do you think he can play as a key forward at AFL level? I think he could. Yeah, I do. But it, I think he'd be sort of in the same mould that like Dangerfield, Dusty, Fife do it. I don't, mm. I wouldn't have him as a permanent forward because would why would you take away an A plus mid to get like a B forward? I mm. wouldn't do that. No, you're right. I don't think his disposal is probably quite good enough to hit set a lot of set shots either. Um, so Champion Data have come out and actually said that Cripps is not an elite player. Yeah. Kate Simpson is the only elite player at Carlton. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I don't really buy, usually buy into that stuff too much. I like to just watch the game and have my own opinions and yeah. <laughs> base it off that. But he's a good player. You can't say he's oh, yeah. not a good player. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I said definitely elite. Yeah. Interesting, um, we released a Bond and Pelly vs. Crips video probably mm. about a bit over a year ago now. That's true. If you were going to take one for the Eagles, who would you take? I'd probably take Bond and Pelly, to be honest. Ooh, stinky. Yeah. I think he was another one that didn't get rated elite. Not that it matters, but yeah. um, neither got rated elite. Crips is better inside, but Bontempelli is no doubt a better user of the football than Crips is. True, true, he is. I've always been a Bontempelli fan over Crips, but I think this year I kind of switched, and I think Crips has proven himself to be one of the absolute best players in the competition. I feel like Bontempelli still has the potential, yeah. but because he's, I feel like he's less proven than Crips. Um, I've kind I of do agree with you there. Yeah, I think Bontempelli's got another level to go to, personally. Yeah, he's another one they're trialling like, as a part-time forward as well, which, yeah. you know, who knows what's the best way to maximise a player who can play forward and back. You've got Martin and Dangerfield and guys like Adler as well. Yeah. I'm trying to find the balance, and it'll be the same yeah. thing with Bontempelli. They're both amazing players. You can't, yeah. you can't doubt that. Yeah. All right, Joyce. So, during the week, in preparation for this video, I asked you to put together your predicted ladder for 2019. I've done mine already. Yep. I've got thousands of hate comments. Thanks again for that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, some of the comments were ridiculous. What were some of the comments? Give, give uh, literally, like, I, I wish I had them saved, but someone was like, this is trash, go delete your channel, you <laughs> joke. And then someone else wrote, Lisa, you have the worst opinion on the internet. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah. I mean, so, that's the thing. That's why footy's so great because people yeah. are so passionate. Yeah. Um, that it fires people up like that. I mean, you yeah. can't place everybody. Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is just our views. So. Yeah. I did say in the video as well, like a lot of predictions just meant to be fun, but you yeah, yeah, you can't get it right. Yeah. Anyway, let's go from bottom to top. Okay. Like we do in the bedroom. 
<laughs> and, um, and hit us with your ladder prediction. So from bottom to top, in last place, I've got Gold Coast Suns for this year. Controversial. Yeah, I know. Um, Losing Tom Lynch. Um, I don't think they're in a very good shape list-wise. Probably got the worst starting midfield in the competition, I'd say. Yeah, I think they're struggling this year. Yeah. Second last is Carlton. Although I, I do have them as one to watch for the future. I think their young players are really... they. They can look forward to the future at Carlton. I think Sam Walsh is going to hit the ground running. I think he's going to have an immediate impact. Liam Stocker. Um, Liam Stocker, he's good. He might take a little bit longer to come on, I think, than Walsh. But I think he's definitely handy. Paddy Dow, I mean, he seems like he's going to be, like, definitely a handy player. Um, got um, Cripps in there already. Added some sort of uh, slightly older guys in Matt Kennedy yeah. and Setterfield as well. From I'm Jarvis. also a big uh, Brendan Bolton fan. He's a really good man manager, and I think... He's really good at getting all the players, it seems like, on board with the one, mm-hmm. one, one way forward and one strategy, and I think eventually it's going to pay off for Carlton. Uh, Carlton had that YouTube series where you kind of get the insight into their rebuild. Yeah, I, re- I really liked that. Yeah, yeah it was really good. I wish more teams would do that, actually. Yeah, no, it's I agree. Cool. But, um, yeah, I don't think they're going to quite be there yet mm. this year. So 16th is Brisbane. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of teams... A lot of people, sorry, had Brisbane as being big improvers. Um, I don't personally see it quite as much. I think they're definitely overhyped. Sorry, Brisbane fans, for saying that, but uh, they won, what, four games last year? Something like that. I think you're right. Something yeah. like that. Mm. I mean, that's not a good mm. That's not a good side. Mm. They got some beltings. I know they, they were, much they were competitive yeah. against a lot of good teams, but I don't see it yet. Fair but right. again, they got good young talent. I think in a couple of years, yeah, they could definitely be a decent side. Young teams don't always improve in a linear kind of way, do they? Exactly, they always sort yeah. of go up and then down. And yeah. people are talking about how they've got Neil, but maybe overlook the fact they lost Beans as well. So they're not going to jump up on yeah. the basis of just getting lucky Neil. So. People but, might say, I'm just saying this because I'm salty because we lost Neil. But I think I think Beams is a slightly bigger loss than Neil is a game. Neil is more a lot more durable. That's the one thing Neil definitely has over Beams is that he, he will play pretty much every game. And he's 25 years old, yeah. so it actually works really well for business lists. Yeah, and he's the sort of guy I can see playing well into his 30s, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, so, yeah. So, 15th, St Kilda. Ooh. I don't know why I react like that to every... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so, so it's, uh, they're a little bit of a hard one to pick, but I think going off what I saw last year, there was a lot of real bad performances from the Saints. Do you think they underachieved last year or do you think we saw the real St Kilda? I think they definitely underachieved last year. And at the same time, when I look at their list, I don't think it's a top eight list, no. Fair enough. Alan Richardson, the first coach to go in 2019? He could be. feel a little bit for him. It sort of feels like he was kind of doomed from the start. <laughs> With Saints, um, he's been there a while now. He has been, like yeah. Five years. Yeah, but he's another one that I I do like. I mean, I'm a big fan in giving coaches time. I don't really like this whole culture, especially in overseas sports like NBA, Premier and Premier League. Like they don't perform for ten weeks and they're pretty much shown the door. Longevity yeah. in coaches is definitely the way to go. Personal. Fourteenth, yeah. Fremantle. I'm not going to um, react this time. <laughs> Although that was the first Ooh. one I probably should have reacted to. Um, You're a Fremantle fan, so why have you got them as low as 14? Yeah, I, again, a team that a lot of people think will probably improve a little bit this year, especially with the acquisitions of yeah, Lowe and Hogan. It's, it's really tough around the like 8 to 14 range. All those teams are so close in my eyes, but the fact that they have to play half their games away from home, they've got a really, really bad away record in the last couple of years. And they're still going to be trying to play a lot of kids next year as well. Still playing a lot of kids. Yeah, I'll, I've got them at 14th, but I do think they'll be a better side than they were last year. 13th place, i got the Dogs. Yeah, they really fell off a cliff a couple of years ago. Uh, they were the premier side. A few of the older players they lost really hurt them. I'm going to make a video soon on the doggies uh, where I talk about it. I actually think they've got some really, really exciting youth over there. They've got yeah. um, some of their better players like Bontempelli, McRae um, and Hunter um, yeah. in the midfield are all like quite young, and younger yeah. than 25 I think That's all true. of them. And then you've got, um, even in the last draft, Ed Richards and Aaron Norton, I think of potential like absolute A-grade players. I, yeah. I think they're really good recruiters. 
And I think if Beveridge can sort of keep the culture intact over the next two to three years, then they'll be back for sure. Yeah. One thing I didn't, I, I feel like they let Dalhouse go way too cheap for his quality. I think he's a really good player. 12th, Port Adelaide. Again, a really tough side to pick. On their day, they can beat anyone, I think, but they're just a bit too wishy-washy, I think, as of late. How yeah. big is the loss of Wingard? It's not huge, but it, I guess it's fairly significant. The loss of the combination of MP and Wingard is kind of hurt them. Polek as well, so they're all kind of creative players. They're the player you want inside in between the lines of forward and midfield, so like the creative players. Um, which I'd say they kind of already lacked when they brought in Watts, Motlop and um, and Pollock a couple of years ago. Now they've lost yeah. three outside players as well. Yeah. And then they've drafted three. They've got Dersma, Rosie and Butters as well. I think yeah. Butters could be someone who gets an early rising star nomination. Okay. I think he'll play early. Okay. He's in my dream team. Yeah. 11th, I've got Kangaroos. I think they could sneak into top eight if they have a good season. I'm a big fan of their midfield now, like Higgins, they got Polek, who's the dairy farmer, um, they Cunnington. Got, they've got Gaff. Um, they got Gaff, yeah. <laughs> no, I think they got a pretty good side, got a good key forward, fairly good back. So even though they're probably not the most talented list, I think they're pretty well balanced. So mm. they're Pretty much, I think, going to be competitive every week, so they should win enough games to get around that 11 spot, I think. Yeah, they've added some dash to their, their midfield, which they needed with Hall and Pollock. Yeah. Um, and Brad Scott is probably a slightly underrated coach, do you think? Uh, not necessarily. I've I just based that on the fact that their list isn't that talented, but they've generally been competitive. Made a prelim in 2015, only yeah. spent one year in the bottom four. I think well, I think if you're doing if you're doing that, you're doing something right. At least culturally. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think he's underrated personally. Fair enough. But I don't think he's overrated either. I think he's about where he is, to be honest. Fair enough. Well, I just meant that because he gets a lot of hate. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but I think that's more for people think that they're complainers. I think the Scott Twins, yeah. yeah. I actually don't mind the Scott Twins. No, they're okay. Yeah, they're, they're, right. Right. they're, they're very easy um, to hate. But I've seen Chris Scott, he spends a bit of time on AFL 360, and I think he's quite yeah. articulate, actually. Yeah. I know that um, he left a pretty big impression at Fremantle when he was there. Mm. Yeah. Tenth place, I got Hawks. <laughs> so this is a pretty big drop. Yeah. I mean, who's their next best midfielder? I guess O'Meara, Smith. When he plays. Yeah. And even O'Meara and Smith aren't like... Like, Sm Smith is good, but I feel like he needs someone to give him the ball. I think if O'Meara and Smith are your starting... If you are your absolute best midfielders, you're probably not in a great... No, I agree. Yeah. Clarkson's record is actually quite ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, yeah. obviously he has a three-peat, but I think what's also impressive is he, they won in 2008, and then he won again in 2013, and in that five years, the list was very different. So mm. he was able to turn over the list and win another play. Which... People want to play for Clarkson. Hawks are a destination club. Mm. Hawks, Geelong, West Coast, they're the, they're the three, I think, that every player would want to play for. It used to be Sydney quite a lot. I think uh, yeah, maybe I think. not every player, but they were. I would say they were a destination club to some extent. Yeah. because that's probably fading a bit now. Ninth, yeah. I've got Adelaide. Could see them finishing fifth. Could see them finishing thirteenth, fourteenth. Wow. Um, they just have so much talent. They just need to get everyone on the park every week, put in consistent performances, which they haven't done last year. Champion data ranks them number two, uh, which is crazy considering how many players they've lost over the last few yeah. years. Yeah, they are again similar to North Melbourne. They're a really well balanced list. They got a good mixture of good talls, good smalls, mids, backs. But again, when it comes to the crunch time, I don't think they're quite personally as good as those top couple. Of um, teams. Eighth, just sneaking into eighth. I think I had eighth and Adelaide swapping in the last round. Um, with Sydney. They probably they've been so good for so long. Don't think the mid is quite as good as it was. Seemed to be struggling last year. Joey Kennedy, Parker, Hanbury's gone. Buddy's probably not quite as good as he was, although he's always capable of turning a game around on his own. Uh, boot. Yeah, I just don't think they're quite as good as they were a few years ago. Yeah, they made some interesting changes. Uh, they lost Hanbury, they lost Rowan, but probably not massive losses. No, they picked up a few. Oh, they lost Nick Newman as well. And they picked up Again. someone like Ryan Clark, who's a bit more of a bit yeah. player. So I wonder if salary cap starting to play a bit of a role there with Buddy's contract being back in. I don't know. I was reading the other day that they're going to... They're losing Tippett as 
put them back in the green, uh, and they're going to prepare another big bid for a superstar at the right. end of the year. Well, he. When was the last time he signed a deal? Probably should research. I don't know. That, he's his next contract's probably such a huge. good player. Though. Yeah, such a good player. Stupidly good player. Yeah, he is really good. Ridiculously good, good player. Uh, so good, it smells bad. Uh, seventh. They're, they're a really tough one. Look, some people have them top four. Some have them like thirteenth. Bombers. I think they've got a lot of players in a good age bracket. They're, I think their starting starting side is good on paper, still not quite good enough to be a top four side personally. And I still think they're a bit inconsistent. Um, I went to the Dockers like Bombers game last year and Fremantle like absolutely flogged them. Like mm. a team that's gonna be a top four team can't get flogged by a team like Fremantle. Yeah, I, I've still got them sneaking in though, so got them at seven. What I found interesting about Essendon was I was looking on the champion data list we were talking about before, and Essendon is ranked the third best team in the competition, but it rated Heppel, Shield, and Hurley as average players. Yeah. Not even good players, average players. So you have to wonder where does the champion data rate their best players if I would argue those three are very close to being, you know, top five to ten players at the club. Well, like you know how much I rate Hurley. And I mean, Heppel, he's a really good player. Are you a big Dylan Shield fan? Not as big a fan as some people. Yeah. I think when GWS lost him, I think I said at the time, out of Shield, Whitfield, Coniglio, Kelly, Kelly he's the one I would have yeah. let go if I was GWS, but he is definitely a handy player. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Uh, I echo the same um, echo the same sentiments. Like I think he's a good player, but maybe uh, yeah, maybe not as good as some people have suggested. Um, for instance, someone like Cornelio is a much better player in my opinion. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sixth place, I got Geelong, old side, yeah. a lot old of warhorse side. But I think their talent is just too good to ignore. You can't ignore a side that has Selwood, Ablett, Dangerfield. Like Harry Taylor, Tom Hawkins, who I'm not actually a huge fan of, but he's, he's okay. Yeah, their top end talent is too good to not be a top end side. That's true. And I think they had some injury battles as well last year. Probably didn't perform as well as they could. And people forget they were probably the second best team for most of 2017 when with Adelaide and Geelong. Obviously, Richmond won the premiership, but Adelaide and Geelong were the top two for most of that year. Yeah. So they, they are like quality. And it's interesting, a lot of Cats fans that are commenting on our videos are really even writing their own team up. Yeah, they're, they are a bit of a hard one to read. I'd like to see Adler as a permanent forward. I think I've said before, for me, he's the greatest player of all time. He's, but he's as good in the forward line, I think, as he is in the midfield. Yeah, it would take a lot of pressure off him as well, being, but he's 36 yeah. this year, I think. Yeah. So. And I think he's a lot better in the forward line than Dangerfield, personally. Yeah. You gotta have danger field in the middle. I'm, I'm, I agree. I honestly think you gotta have your best midfielders in the midfield. I agree, and I think it works because yeah, danger field's the best midfielder, and I think Ablett's a better forward. Yep. So that's how I would balance it if I was too long. I agree. Fifth place is Melbourne. They're a really tough one. I think on just pure list talent, I think they're arguably the best club. Champion data agrees with you. I could see them finishing first. Super well balanced. Again, they don't have like super. A++ superstars. Gorn. Gorn, yeah, I mean Gorn is. That is true. But I think, uh, like West Coast, Collingwood, Richmond all have more A++ stars, yeah. but they're just, whole 22 yeah, is just yeah, good. Yeah. Even in their midfield, you usually expect some of the better teams to have a real A grade. Yeah, midfield. exactly. They don't. Not West Coast, but Melbourne. Um, Clayton Oliver is probably their best midfielder, would you say? I, and yeah, even then, again. It's pretty easy, he's, isn't it? Yeah, and he's nowhere near the level of Dangerfield. And yeah. Dusty, um, yeah. as good um, as he is, yeah. but every player in that team is good. Like the depth of that team is ridiculous. And they have Jake Lever to come back as well. Jake Lever to come back, yeah. I could see them win winning the Premiership. Fourth place, I've got the Giants. Probably this is one a lot of people might not agree yeah. with, but I think most of their, like their whole core playing group is still of like a good age, like probably mid to late 20s. I think the talent's too good to write them off personally. Coniglio, yeah, I, I said them before, Coniglio, Whitfield, Kelly. Kelly. Those three players are ridiculously good right now. I think Whit Whitfield is the best rebound defender in the competition. Yeah. yeah. I, that's how highly I rate him. I think he's an absolute gun. He's so yeah. damaging, isn't he? And he's obviously massive running capacity, yeah. but he's just he's laser left boot yeah. as well. They are, they're the class team of the competition. Like, the way they move the ball, it's so 
precision. Like, you can tell the players just have so much talent. Mm. Sometimes in the past, they've probably been beaten for physicality a little bit. Probably get, got a bit bullied by the Hawks and the mm. Swans and West Coast um, sides. But these guys are older now, and I don't think that'll happen. So, yeah, I got them in fourth place. So we're down to our top three. Top three. Yeah. A... Any one of these teams, I think, can win the Premiership for sure. Who we got in third? Third place, I got Richmond. I think we could see a little bit of teething problems with the Tom Lynch thing. Um, I don't think it's just going to be coming and kick 70 goals, personally. I guess because they've kind of structured around a forward line that only has one key forward, so it's quite exactly. a dramatic change. It's not like he's replacing a worse player. He's coming in as, in a completely different role. And I think Jack Rewall is a better player, 100%. So I hope... Tigers don't push Rewalt up the ground to give Lynch more space near the goals because I think Rewalt has to be near the goals. I think they're a really good side. Again, for talent-wise, across the 22, every player on the park is a good player. I just think maybe they got a little bit found out. Richmond fans are going to hate me for saying that, but I think, yeah, their game plan maybe got a little bit found out towards the end of last year. Mm. Hawks really pressed them. The Bulldogs nearly beat them. The Bulldogs nearly beat them. Collingwood, Collingwood smashed them. Smashed them. They are a great side, don't get me wrong, but I've got them in third. Second place, I've got Collingwood. Real. They're the real hype team right now, and I think they'll probably continue that form. Yeah. How big is the pick up of Dave Beans in your eyes? Again, I, I'm not a huge believer in you just pick up a player and suddenly you're like that much better. Obviously going to be really handy. I personally think Pendlebury's slightly fallen back a little bit in the last few years. Mm. I almost think playing, giving Beams a midfield spot could almost push Pendlebury into a more creative role. Half forward, half back, where he's, he's more of a quarterback, like distributor, because his kicking skills are elite, like yeah. one of the best we've ever seen. Yeah, I can see him sort of more towards half back where he can... Yeah, I agree. They just got a lot of depth, don't they, yeah. Collingwood? Especially in the midfield and the half forwards. Adams and Trelaw in particular, too, yeah. like very good midfielders starting to find like their absolute... Yeah. Find their absolute feet, you might say. Collingwood as well, I think they have a really good rotation... So they can start to goey Hoskin Elliott up forward. Those two can come into the midfield and be really good midfielders as well. You can push Trelaw up and he can kick like three or four goals a game. Just the versatility. Mm. Tell yeah. you what, Jordan De Goey is a scary talent. Yeah. Like that grand final performance was actually unbelievable. All three goals were unbelievable goals and I saw it in the flesh. Uh, I think he could be a serious, serious gun of the competition. I think he's the, the next next big thing oh yes yeah. for me the next elite player of the comp interesting yeah good call all right so we're left with one team who is your top ranked side in 2019 so it does hurt me a little bit i'm not gonna lie i said it last year i said all year last year that they were the best side you did um and i don't think that's changing and that's west coast every player on the i know i've said this about a few clubs now but every player on the ground for especially yes. west coast mm -hmm is a good player. They've got the best, probably, arguably the best top forward of the last five years. Swans fans are gonna probably tear me to shreds for I, that. It's a fair call, he won two Coleman's and nearly won a third. They um, got, they just uh, got really good players everywhere. Their midfield probably performed a little bit better than I thought it would. Oh yeah, I think you're not the only one thinking um, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Shuey, Shuey's grand final, that was a, like an elite performance. Elliot Yo is a great player, Gaff, he's a really good, great player. At the risk of talking up my own team too much, I think the impressive thing about West Coast, which makes me have faith in them, is the fact that a lot of shit went down in 2018. So obviously Gaff went out for like, what, eight weeks. Nat Nui did his ACL. Uh, Kennedy missed so, uh, six games or something in a row. Yeah. Darling missed six games. And the team kept winning, which really speaks to a really strong coaching structure and they're uh, like really strong tactically and obviously the spirit within the group as well. So I think when teams are able to win games despite key players missing, then they're doing something right and they're probably here to stay. Do you think that the Eagles really miss Nick Nat? I don't know. I don't think they do. No, honest. neither do I. Yeah, because... I mean, even the game that he went down in, we got better after halftime. Uh, yeah. That was against Collingwood. I think maybe psychologically he was a big, he had a big presence. No, I think um, Nat Nui would be kind of like a, a luxury, a bonus in 2019, rather yeah. than something we're really relying on. I think Gaff would have been a much bigger loss. Yeah, I agree with that. And even still, I mean, they 
they won games after that. They won three yeah. big finals after that. That's what I say. Like, if a team can win despite losing key players, then um, there, there's a team you got to watch out for. Do you think sometimes when when you have a Nat Nui or a Fife, do you think sometimes players can almost they almost expect that player to do the work and mm-hmm. it kind of they hold themselves back a little bit. Yeah. If Fife is going for the ball, like Brayshaw or Chera is probably just going to leave it, even mm-hmm. if it's there for them to pick up. Same as the guy like with Geelong with Danger, with Dusty. That's probably one of the only negative of having a player like that. Yeah, that's very true. You do kind of see examples um, in sport all over of teams losing their best player and actually improving. It does happen. So it, it can go both ways. Psychologically, having your best player on the field um, can give you a lift because you, you're more confident. Mm. But you know, if, you, if you're expecting them to do the hard work for you, even in the back of your mind, it would probably have that effect yep. as well. So yeah, that's my ladder. Cool. Um, Are you going to tip a premier? I can't go past West Coast. I'm going to give a, a shout out to Melbourne. From fifth. And I think Giants have been written off. Any, any of those teams from fifth to first, I think, could easily win the premiership. Yeah, especially if they're a Victorian team, because Melbourne, for instance, from fifth, could have an away MCG yeah. game. So It's and just changed the ladder and the style so much. Literally, style, style of play, the best style of play, can change in six months. Last year, I had Collingwood second last, I think. You which did, is, that's true, yeah. 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 Uh, most people had both Collingwood and West Coast outside yeah. of the eight last year, which, yeah. yeah, just goes to show how hard it is to predict. All right, let's give a, f- a few wild card predictions. I want to okay. hear Brownlow, Coleman, and uh, breakout players to watch out for. Brownlow probably would have gone with Tom Mitchell if he was playing. I kind of get, get the feeling we might see a little bit of a... A new one this year. I feel like we're due for a draw. I reckon Fife will draw with someone. I want to say Cripps, but I don't think Carlton's going to win enough games. Neither. I'm going to put a wild card out there. I'm going to say Kelly. Oh, I was just about to say Josh Kelly. Yeah. I'll go Fife and Kelly draw. How about that? Okay. That'd be all right. I'll go a six-way draw. <laughs> but Fife will lose because he got suspended. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much impossible for him to get the way he plays. Yeah. Impossible for him to not get suspended. Because he's such a physical player. He's too... I'd love to say him, but he's too risky for me. Very injury prone and very prone of accidentally smacking someone in the head. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Gap has the same problem. What about Coleman Medley? Coleman... Oh, Rewalt. Jack Rewalt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Back to back? Yeah, I think he's elite. Right now. Will Lynch pinch gold from him though? Yes, he will. <laughs> that, he will still win right. it. I think those two are going to kick like the... Massive percent of Richmond's goals. So, and what about just a couple of players to watch? Um, players you think are going to go to the next level? Oh, this is a, always a tough one. Well, I said I think Dugowie will be yep. an elite player. I agree with that one. That's I think ball. Whitfield will make that step to elite. There's a couple of young players that come to mind for me: Tim Taranto and Sam Palpepper. But I think they're probably just a bit young to really take the next step. I think there'll yep. be a couple of years, but I think those guys are going to be elite. I'm a really big fan of Jack Higgins. I think it's too early, but I think he could definitely be the best small forward in the competition. I think to go in Whitfield, they're going to take the step to be like on that like A plus. Yeah, yeah, on that yeah, five danger field. Uh, Ablet, mm. dusty pedestal. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed having Joycey back, put it in the comments. If you didn't, <laughs> leave a thumbs down and you won't make it onto the next video. Yeah. I'll be giving the boot. <laughs> please leave any... Uh... <clears throat> yeah, please leave any questions or anything you want to communicate to us in the comments. Um, join the Discord if you haven't already. We've yeah, got a great community Discord. going. And as always, please like and subscribe. This has been another video from True Footy. I thought we were going to say it together. <laughs> Honestly, don't even know why I go for free.